Okay, ladies and gentlemen, my guest, my special guest here, Elliot Menz. Applause for him. Yeah, this is a great guy. You know, I there are a lot of people in Mexico that love you because you are a very talented guy. We know that you are American, you were radio personality and media consultant, and you were publicist of many great artists like John Lennon, Bob Dylan, um, and, and many others like, well, in nowadays, I think Paris Hilton and another Paris, Paris Jackson, two different, and uh, Paris, and another is Paris, France, but that's another thing. So the most important is that we are here with this great man. Ladies and gentlemen, Elliot means the legend. Oh, oh. Welcome. <sighs> Muchas gracias for that invitation. Um, hardly worthy of all the accolades. Um, I represented Paris Hilton years ago. I currently represent Paris Jackson. The two of them are good friends, but they're very separate kinds of beings. And it's an honor to join you on your television show. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure and an honor to be here with you. I know that you are a busy man, so it's a, I'm very grateful. Um, uh, I really thank you to, for your time. And I know that you have uh, interviewed a lot of people, more than 2,000 different people. And these great people, some of them are like Salvador, Salvador Dali, Tommy Leary, Jack Nicholson, Alice Cooper, Mick Jagger, and the great John Lennon that he was your friend as well. So what does it mean to do this so many interviews for you? Well, um, it was a learning experience. One of the wonderful things about uh, having been on radio and television in the earlier part of my career, I'm a consultant now, I no longer do the interviews, I advise people. Um, but when I was doing, as you say, over 2000 interviews over a period of maybe 12, 13 years of my life, it gave me the opportunity to sit in the same room with some really remarkable people that I would not have met if I had not been on the radio. Um, my grandmother used to say to me, there's an airplane going over our heads, the, the noise will go away in a second. My grandmother used to tell me that God gave us two ears and one mouth, which means we should listen twice as much as we speak. Yeah. So a good interviewer practices the discipline of listening. I learned from every one of those people that I had uh, interviewed in my earlier career. And it also uh, helped to make me an enormously curious man. Wow. I love it. So I think that you were learning a lot with all this through the years. And you know what? I listened different interviews before this interview. Thank you. And it seems to me that you are um, a very smart guy. You really are very intelligent, very smart. And there was a spiritual interview that uh, a spiritual coach or astrologer, or I don't remember his name, he did with you. So it was great to, to, to know about your spirituality too. Uh, what does it mean life? for you, Elliot? Um, probably in among those spiritual interviews that you listen to on my website, my free website, um, you may have heard me speaking with either Alan Watts or Baba yeah. Ram Das or a, yeah. variety, a variety of, of people on the spiritual path. Um, Possibly the most significant lesson that I got from the people that I either interviewed or became friends with came from a, a, a man named Baba Ram Das, who practiced a very simple discipline. He said, be here now. 
Wow. That's all. When people uh, tell me, you know, I want to get started in meditation. I want to get started on the spiritual journey. Uh, what's the first book I should read? Uh, what practice should I take? What do I do? I quote him and say, begin by being still, by being silent, and just be here now. Sounds, Absolutely. sounds simple, but uh, you're a man of uh, spiritual pursuits, and you know first that you have to empty your mind of preconceived thought, distraction, visions, things that just get in the way of clarity. Yeah. So um, I, I think that life well we have a life every one of us and we can do whatever we want so Elliot means feel comfortable with his life Elliot means uh, it's conscious about uh, what he has done and is there something that you would like uh, to do that you haven't done yet oh many things many uh -huh. things I'm, I'm far too young to look back, and um, I view each day as the possibility for a new adventure. I have more time now um, in my 70s than I did in my 20s and 30s when I was doing all that uh, stuff. So there's more time, you know, during the pandemic, during COVID. Uh, people said, uh, you know, they found themselves just sitting on their couch watching Netflix all day or something like that. <laughs> uh, I took the time during that year to reread every book in my library behind me that I read too early in life. I read some of the most important literature when I was 15, 16 or 17. I had no idea what, what was going on. So during COVID, I had a chance to read a few hundred more books. Um, we weren't able to interact with people in bars and restaurants. So I took walks and I took hikes and I practiced meditation. And I had very important conversations with friends of mine and met new people that way by phone. The point being, no matter what cards or dealt to you on the table, you pick up the card and you work with that card. And there are gonna be moments when you get a very positive, affirmative, happy card. Great, enjoy that one. But know that there's another card to pick up. And if that's a blue card, card that brings you down in some way, See what the teaching is behind the sadness. Is that kind of clear or too wishy-washy? Uh, excuse me, what, what's the... A uh, wishy-washy, uh, is, is what I just said kind of clear or is it uh, too abstract? Oh yeah. Um, I think it's... Uh... Well, I don't know what to say, but but I would like to to ask something that it's in my mind for you right now. Yes. What do you think? Why is there a lot of suffering? And I know that it's a very hard question because uh, you believe in God. You said I do. in an interview, you you are we are all part of God, but. Why do you think God allows suffering? There are a lot of suffering in this world. We would like to have a peaceful world, like John Lennon said, give peace a chance, no suffering, peace, love, compassion. But what can we do? Is enough just the thoughts uh, and the perception? Or do you think we need all this uh, in this world? It's a very profound question. 
And it's a question that we've been asking since the beginning of time. Why would God create suffering? Why would he create cancer, starvation, homelessness, war, all, all the things on earth that have haunted us since the dawn of time? Of course, none of us know. If you're a believer, you believe that there will come a time in the afterlife when you will be able to get the answer to these questions. I have faith that everything that happens has happened for some kind of reason that all, many of us or all of us just don't get, just don't understand. I cannot explain it away. That would be arrogant. In the kind of world that I envision and the one that you described that John envisioned, when he said, imagine all the people living life in peace, you know, that makes a lot of sense to me. I didn't yes. understand why we can't be there. So the reason for, for the fighting and the discord, I don't know. I've never met anybody who knows, but I believe that the answer uh, eventually will be revealed. Yeah, I'm sure I agree with you. And I think in my opinion, uh, music helps a lot to heal the world. I yes. think it's part of the, it's a God's gift that comes from another dimension. And we are like this, uh, we have this perception to create this music in this third dimension and have this, uh, you know, what would it be the world without music? It's great to have beautiful art in this world. So uh, talking about art and music, what is your favorite artist of all time, Elliot? Ooh. <laughs> I agree with you about music and I agree with you about music as a healing power. Yeah, thank you. I believe that music um, comes to us in the form of angels. Yes. Angels bring us the gift of music from the heavens. I love all kinds of music. So my favorite artists would include Chopin and Beethoven and Bach. And they would also include, you know, so many of the people from the world of jazz, classic rock, contemporary music, blues singers, you name it. Of course, I love the music of, uh, of John. I love the music of the Beatles. I love the music of Bob Dylan. Um, my list is probably very similar to most of the people watching us on television. If you asked everybody who's watching us right now, tell you your 10 favorite artists, the ones who influenced you the most, a lot of the same names would appear in all of our lists. Every now and then, <clears throat> I come across an artist who may not have been famous, but there was something about the music that just altered my life. Django Reinhardt. You probably never heard of him from the 1940s. Yeah, I don't know who. <laughs> no. And I could, I, prob I could probably name a uh, hundred others that just in the past year or two, I've, I've discovered for the first time and they've wow. changed me. And I'm not stuck in the past. I was with a friend of mine last night here at my house and she's much younger than I am. And we had a nice dinner together, she's a friend. And I asked her, what are you listening to? what new music is out there that you think I should give a listen to that I might be unfamiliar with? And she said, well, you might want to listen to this. And I listened to a variety of artists. All this talk about the great music being gone and that everything that comes out today just being Spotify awfulness, it's not true. 
<laughs> there are contemporary musicians, young musicians in their 20s, who are singing their songs and playing their music and touching the lives of other people. So when it comes to all art, we just have to maintain open eyes and open ears. It's true. Absolutely. I agree. Because we can say that we, we can't say that there, there is no good music now, just in the past. There are, I think there are great musicians, great singers, great bands. So we really have to listen and pay attention to them. Yeah. And, and, and also there's great poetry being written. There's great yeah. literature being written. Um, there, there are forms of artistic expression now through this machine that we didn't have 50 years ago. Just think of what the masters could have done with this machine. If Bach had one of these machines on top of his piano and said, let me play you something I was working on last night. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. in many ways, we're just beginning. This is just uh, the start of, a, of an entire new adventure, not just in art, but in people really speaking with each other learning from each other. On that screen of yours, you have a library of every book that has ever been written since the beginning of time. Yeah. When, people, when people criticize younger people, teenagers or people in their 20s or dismiss them as just TikTok people. <laughs> it's not true. We are creating right now the smartest, most well-informed, most well-educated generation in the history of mankind. Yeah. We should, we should rejoice in that. That's good news stuff, isn't it? Yeah, it's true. And changing the topic, I see in Elliot Mintz a very elegant man with, uh, with beautiful pictures, with beautiful women, with beautiful parties. When you look at the word Elliot Mintz, that name in Google, you can see, you know, party, champagne, and these kind of things that is like very, uh, a lot of glamour, because there is a spiritual part of, of you, but there is, I think, a material part with these elegant suits. Those suits are so beautiful. Do you have a special tailor for that? Or, or where do you buy them? Oh, well, uh, thank you about my uh, suits. Uh, you might note that on social media, nobody posts pictures of them taking out the trash. <laughs> I do that too. I wash dishes. I get my hands dirty because I like to garden. And there are times when I'm around the house that I'm just wearing a t-shirt and a pair of shorts. I mean, that would probably be uninteresting to put on the screen. <laughs> Many of those people that you see me photographed with or clients or at a professional gala or accompanying them on a red carpet. Yeah. Women that I date, women that I go out with, I never post their pictures on the screen. They're, that's, that's private, you know, that's just between me and the ladies. So yes, I know that some people get this impression of the, me being kind of a Hollywood guy <laughs> because of all that, uh, it's not so. And by the way, there are many women of beauty who are also women of great spiritual purpose, brilliant women, that there is more than just the look of them. Yes, I do like to dress up, especially when I go out. I think it's respectful of the person that you're going to go out with. I do have a tailor and I do have a place where I buy some of my flashy sport jackets, yes. But I, I won't plug it on the air because I don't do commercials. Yeah, I love it, but I, I really love it. It's, it's another side of your, another part of your, your work, of your look, of uh, of doing this. You can go in flip-flops to a, a gala uh, party with Elton John. And so so it's yeah. important. You look really great, let me tell you. And, and I can see you this part of you, a very elegant and a smart guy. 
you're you're very kind, but uh, and I I do want you to keep in mind, if you see a photograph of me with Sir Elton John, and it's on the web, I know, I'm attending a benefit that he does in Hollywood each year for the Elton John Foundation to find yes. an end to AIDS. He has raised hundreds of millions of dollars. So yes, on the screen, it looks like a party uh, with very, very attractive people and um, they're all dressed up and uh, you know, bands are playing, but you know, that's just to get you inside. That's just to get you to pay attention. What's really happening is that people are paying a great deal of money to go to these events with almost all of it. Elton John doesn't take a salary for his work. I try to do my Hollywood red carpet stuff, not for the opening of a movie, or a new nightclub, that doesn't particularly interest me. But if it's a philanthropic organization, if it's something that's going to inspire people to donate $20 to a cause, oh yeah, I'll put on my flashiest jacket and be there in a heartbeat. Wow, yeah. So I, I can see this humanitarian and, and, and all these, um, how do you say the word in English? Um, sometimes I forget a few words, uh, but I. It's, how do you uh, say it? How do you say it in Spanish? It's a uh, philant. Well, like philanthropy. Philanth philanthropy. Yeah. Yeah. Philanthropy. Philanthropy. Yes, so sir. I can see this also in, in you guys. I, I this speaks very good for you, it, and it's not just what people say but what the universe say to you because everything you do is like a boomerang so i think it's great to help each other and i really um congratulate you about this and it's beautiful job to do i i'm thinking to 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 do some altruistic things here in mexico too Excellent. i have yeah, I have done some for the children with cancer. I did a, a, a singer contest and, uh, and the money that we raised was for helping that. So Fabulous. Fabulous. Yeah, I think, I'm thinking to doing, to doing more things, more bigger things in, in this uh, to help we, we as a humankind, mankind. So you as a human being how do you feel a reflection of yourself in other people that's an interesting question let me think about that for a second uh do i feel a reflection of myself through other people um i hadn't thought about it until this moment oh I'm sure when we're finished with the interview, I'll have a much better answer. But the answer, of course, is yes. Um, I see in the eyes of the person I'm talking with a mirror of what I'm projecting. If I'm talking to somebody and I see sadness coming over their face, I have to say, what have I said or done to have caused pain? If I see somebody light up with laughter and joy, and I know that they're reacting to something that I said or do, I've got to do a little bit more of that. So yes, the, if you look into the eyes of the person that you're talking with, it is a mirror of where you are. Try not to bring your own grief into the lives of other people. Try to bring your ability to heal into the lives of other people. And also be open to being healed by others. Um, do you know this song by Bob Dylan called Forever Young? Oh, I have heard that, yeah, Forever Young. Yes. Now, people, uh, when they listen to the song, they sometimes miss a little line that's very important. 
in that song. Bob writes, may you always do for others and let others do for you. So people get that first part, may you always do for others, that is the righteous thing to do, but also allow for others to do something for you. Keep an open heart. The energy must not flow just in one direction. So when we use those expressions about we're all in this together, et cetera, et cetera, we really are. It takes two people to have a conversation. And in terms of healing, some people are strong enough to heal themselves. Some people are. But most of us need some encouragement, need some help, spiritual help, sometimes financial help, moral help. Whoever you are and wherever you are, you are capable of helping another person, even if it's a Kenyan. You have that ability if you choose to use it. Yeah, I agree with you. I'm surprised because I didn't know that I was going to listen to this great guy, not just as a, oh, just a, this famous that he's friend of famous people, but also of this beautiful side that really admire of many guys that I've known, and you are one of them. You are, you know what what is uh, life, you know what? It's because if you see in other people this uh, part of your life, part of the creation of God, is that we are all connected. That is the answer. That is the answer. Yeah. Like it or not, there are some people who don't like that. There are some yeah. people who say, no, I'm independent. Um, <laughs> no, I'm... Uh, I'm better than that person. Uh, no, I'm stronger than that person. I've got more money than that person. Don't tell me that I'm connected to that homeless person on the street. I have nothing in common with that person. That person just doesn't want to work or get a job or something. Yeah. I work there. That's nonsense. Yeah. Elliot, and that is, um, we, we understand that because it depends on the perspective that we, we understand that. I can see myself as the, as the greatest uh, because a, a little ant is nothing for me. But if I see, if I go into the, the space and I see this little, this tiny blue planet that is the earth, we are all here. So we can see the, the universe is a paradox. It's we are nothing and we are all at the same thing. That, that photograph, um, it was just last week in 1969 that we celebrated the anniversary of the first landing on the moon. Yeah. And that photograph that Buzz Aldrin, he was the second man who walked on the moon. He took a picture that's uh, referred to as Earthrise. It's the most downloaded picture in the history of the internet. And when wow. you look at the photo, and anybody right now can just type that in, Earthrise. The first thing that you notice is that there are no borders, there are no countries. You don't see people being different from animals. You don't see animals or people. You don't see skin color. You don't see palaces in the sky. What you see is this tiny little ball. Imagine yeah. all the people. That's the hood. So, That's this. so that means that just the mind of many humans and the culture are creating all these separations and all these differences. Of course. So it's enough that we have illness in this world. And now we are doing... Uh, a lot of we are, I don't know how to say in English, but like castigarnos, 
Castiganos. Casti does that mean looking inwardly? I, I'll punish, it's punish ourselves. I mean, I, I wanted to say punish, castigar, punish. It's like punish ourselves with all this kind of thinking, I think. Uh, and I don't know if you, you know what I mean? Yes, I, th I think the word that you're looking for in English would be castigate, castigate. Okay. And, I, and I believe the Spanish is castigar. Yes. And it is a, a form of a punishment, as you say. Yeah. And yes, the, the world, it, it, so many people talk about this divisiveness that we see everywhere, you know? One of the things about the divisiveness is that we are learning, even through anger, even through raised voices, that after everybody finishes shouting and making noises and waving flags or whatever they're, they're doing, we all want to go home to somebody who we love. We all want to have a meal. We all want to have shelter. We all want to be able to sleep. We'd like to wake up in the morning, do our work, do our service. Then we go back out in the streets and we shout at each other or write angry texts on the internet or something. But the reality is most of us want the same thing. Most yeah. of us want not only the best for ourselves, but also the best for our neighbors. And, it, and we need the same. We need... Um, if we if we think about material things like the like the food for living we need all that and the spiritual things like love and you know all these we need the same uh, because we were created from the same and i agree with you and thank you for for uh telling this i really appreciate what you're saying um another question uh, this is very important question for me. Uh, yes. This is one of my last questions because I know that you you have to go to sleep early, but no, uh, you take your time. I go to sleep very late. <laughs> what is your advice for these new 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 generations that would like to succeed, and and maybe they would like to be like Elliot Mins or or another, another person. So what is your advice for them? What is the meaning of success for you and your advice for these people? Be original. Be original. Don't try to be like somebody else. That person already exists. Musicians come to me all the time asking me to represent them. And they say, I sing just like, and they name somebody famous. And I said, well, I guess that means that the record company doesn't need to hire you <laughs> because they've got the other person who you sing just like that sells 100 million records. The people who have been most successful in music are the people who have done something that had not been done before. They were original. Sure, they built on the foundations of all the music that's ever been created in the universe. But there was something distinctive about the sound of Elvis Presley that we had never heard before Elvis sang the way he sang. There was something about the Beatles in performance, their compositions, that we just had not heard or seen before. The first time Bob Dylan took poetry and thought and combined it with rock and roll music, it had not been done before. When Michael Jackson appeared on the scene, nobody ever sang and danced like that before. And so it is as things go forward. So in the advice department, the first is, to be original, not to try and copy somebody else. The second advice is to really become good 
at whatever it is you do before you go out to try and sell it. Yeah. Because you might, you might only have one chance to knock on the door for somebody to pay attention to your work. So if you want to be a carpenter, learn how to be the, the very best carpenter that you've ever seen. And when you have the tools, the equipment, the style, the way of doing it, the way of doing the perfect cabinet, the perfect table, then you can go out and say to somebody, hire me for a million dollars and I will fill your home with beautiful woodwork. Wow. But first know how to do the beautiful woodwork. You got to know your song well before you start singing. So yeah. It's practice. It's discipline. And also, don't take rejection too personally. If you present yourself to somebody, whatever it is that you do, and they say, uh, I don't think so, I don't get it, um, you, you don't get the job. Well, that's one person's opinion. You take a deep breath and you knock on the next door and you keep doing it until somebody recognizes your value. And finally, the people who succeed in life on all the levels, I'm not just talking about making a lot of money, but I'm talking about altering the world and, and living more fulfilled lives. They bring value into the lives of others. Make yourself valuable so that when you present yourself, people look at you and say, there's something about that woman or there's something about that man that I trust and value. The message is coming from a pure place. How can I help and how can I be of service to you? So for whatever it's worth, those are the Elliot Mintz uh, tips or suggestions. Oh, I really appreciate uh, these wise words because I really understand what you're saying. And I, I am 100% agree with you, Elliot. And just one last thing, and uh, just to uh, uh, be here, well, grateful with you. I feel um, my um, that you gave your time <clears throat> to this interview. And I can see these beautiful thousands of uh, music uh, records, albums that you have in your house. Wow, it's wonderful. Wonderful. It's vinyl. That's vinyl. Vinyl. Yeah, I can see them. Uh, I don't know how many thousands are there, but it's Five. beautiful. Five, Five thousand. thousand. Yes. Wow. Well, uh, when I used to be on the on the on the radio, of course, uh, the record companies send you records because they want you to play the records on the radio. That's the way it uh, it was. And over the years, I was just never able to uh, let go of the vinyl. And I still think it's the purest form outside of tape and live to listen to music. I prefer it over the other forms. So, and vinyl is making a uh, is making a comeback. Wow. Last year, in America, 3% of all records, so all music sold were in vinyl. I don't know if that's the case in Mexico, but the vinyl record, in addition to the sound, is an art form. The pictures on the vinyl, 12 inches by 12 inches, are gorgeous works of art. And yeah. in the back, the liner notes, the biographies, the comments, or like teaching tools, they're educational. So it's a lot different than just downloading something and uh, washing the dishes. So I love that Bible. <laughs> yeah, it's a treasure all you have there. And it's uh, beautiful and it's a wonderful interview. Um, and there are many more questions for you, but 
It can be maybe in another interview in a couple of months if you want. It's been a pleasure, believe me. Um, and your fans are going to enjoy very much this interview. And thank you very much again. And ladies and gentlemen, Elliot Mans, applause for him. Yes. Thank you very, very much. You're a, you're a superb interviewer. You're an excellent listener. And uh, I'll be happy to return to your show anytime that you would like me. I wish you much luck in life. Thank you very much. You're very kind, very kind man. Thank you. And I hope to see you soon. God bless you. God bless you. Bye-bye.